you get given two conditions, namely, <coughs> excuse me, that k is some real number here that I'm multiplying by i. And then you've got all of this garbage in here that multiplies apparently to a purely imaginary number. And then this is what they want you to show, something to do with two, two moduli, okay? Now, how would you even begin such a question in either, you know, just in Cartesian form or in mod arg form, right? Now, you can do them. You can solve any question in any way you like. But representations, different representations, make different things fall out more easily, okay? So here's where we're going to begin. Let's draw this on a diagram to begin with, okay? So I know that k is a real number. And z1 minus z2, z1 plus z2, I know what they represent. They represent diagonals in a parallelogram. Okay? So let's draw this thing. I'm not going to leave behind all the cool stuff I know about moduli and arguments. Okay? They're still going to be useful to me. But now that I think about this all geometrically, and there's parallelograms and other kinds of shapes in here that I know how they behave, I can take advantage of that. So watch, right? This is what I know. They give this to me as a, um, as a statement that is true, so I'm going to use that as my starting point. I've got z1, take away z2, z1 plus z2, and ki, okay? Now, just see through how much stuff there is for a second, and recognize that, look, when you add two, when you add two complex numbers, what kind of number do you get out the other end? Complex. Another complex number, right? If you subtract two complex numbers, what kind of number do you get out the end? Answer, another complex number. And then when you take those two complex numbers and divide, the quotient of two complex numbers, still a complex number, okay? So this awful mess is a complex number. That's a complex number. So therefore, both of these things have an argument. Do you agree with that? Because all complex numbers have an argument. So I'm going to say the argument of this complex number, which admittedly looks messy, but that's okay, should be the same as the argument of this complex number because the equation says they're the same complex number. Okay, so they must have the same argument. That's good. Okay, now have a look at this, right? Tell me what you remember about what happens when you take complex numbers, divide them, and therefore what that means about their arguments, okay? Maybe I'll, I'll remind you, for instance, let's do the easier case. If you take two complex numbers that are multiplied, what happens to their arguments in the new combined complex number? They've been added, haven't they? Arg z plus arg omega, right? So that's what happens with multiplication. What happens with subtraction? Mine. Sorry, division. <laughs> I, did, I gave you the answer. You're, you're, you're welcome. Okay, so therefore, I've got this angle up the top, right? And I'm taking away this angle argument down the bottom. Okay? So far, so good. What's the argument of ki? Recognizing that k is any real number you like. Any real number. Oh, but it has to be on this axis because it has uh -huh. i on Yeah, it. very good. So if I say that k is just a real number, then k itself is on the real axis. You agree? Somewhere. I don't know how far or, or which side of the real axis, but I know it's on there. Once I do ki, I know it's the opposite. It's on the imaginary axis. I don't know how far up or down or which, which side, but it's on there, right? So therefore, I know its argument has to be some multiple of what? Pi on two. Pi on two. Now really, you've only got two options, don't you? I could think about it as like pi on two, three, pi on two, five, blah, 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 blah. Or I could just think about the principal argument. There's only two options, aren't there? There's the top one, which is pi on two. And then there's the bottom one, which is negative, negative pi on two. All times k. Okay? And the k doesn't make a difference. Doesn't make a difference to the argument. Right? It makes a difference to the modulus, but the argument doesn't care. It's just talking about like which way around you're going to face. All right, now hold on a second. Remember, this is just an angle, and this is just some other angle, right? So if I say, oh, okay, I have two angles. Let's just call them alpha and beta, <coughs> right? And when you subtract them, you get like say pi on two. What does that mean about the two angles? The, the, the alpha is lots of beta. Don't forget, I could have a negative as well. But it's the same thing, right? What I mean is that they're 90 degrees pi on two radians apart from each other. For instance, one might be, one might be, okay, let's just, let's just go in, um, we'll just go in degrees for a second just to, to be nice to you. One could be 90 and one could be, I'm um, sorry, one could be 120 and one could be 30, right? Or maybe one could be 110 and one could be 20. They're off by 90 degrees, 
Okay. So what does that mean about these two? They're at right angles to each other, right? They're 90 degrees, pi on two radians off from one another. But I know where these guys are. What are these two guys? They're the diagonals of my parallelogram, which apparently, according to this, are at right angles. The diagonals of my parallelogram are at right angles. Diagonals are at right angles. What kind of a parallelogram has diagonals at right angles? A rhombus. A rhombus. A kite does have diagonals at right angles, but a kite is not a parallelogram, and that's where I began. Parallelogram. Oh. Yeah? So a parallelogram plus oh, it could be a perpendicular. Okay? Well, a square is a kind of rhombus, so that's okay. Right? So this says, can we just finish this thought? Yeah? Okay. Therefore, right, the diagonals, <coughs> excuse me, this parallelogram I've named it OACB of OACB are perpendicular. Okay? If the diagonal is perpendicular and I already know it's a parallelogram, it must be a rhombus. It might even be a square, but I don't need to know that. Um, therefore, OACB is a rhombus. And I almost don't need to say anything else, do I? What am I trying to prove again? Before I get to your question? I'm trying to prove that these two things, Z1 and Z2, this guy and this guy have the same length, which by definition, a rhombus does. I guess I would say OA equals OB because I'm talking about lengths. Right? Um, all sides in a rhombus are equal. And OA and OB represent, respectively, the vectors of Z1 and Z2. So their magnitudes are the same, because I was talking about lengths, which are really magnitudes. Okay? No computation, right? We just use logic and what we know about the fabric of complex numbers and their geometry. Question? Physically, what would be the argument of Z1 minus Z2? Would yes, that's that a great question. That's a great question, okay? The brilliant thing about this is that if that's Z1 minus Z2, okay? Hmm. Oh, is it when you move it down? Now, this is the free vector, right? This is yeah. the free vector. So where is the position vector of Z1 minus Z2? And the answer is it's down here, right? Oh, so then you use So the therefore the angle, the argument I'm talking about is right there. Okay. Yeah? yeah? Now where is um where's Z1 plus Z2? Well I already have its argument. It's here. Right? But if these guys are at right angles to each other, then those two are at right angles to each other. Because look, I have alternate angles. Do you yeah, see yeah. them? Oh. See them? <laughs> no worries. Great question. Okay, so this is what starts you off in exercise 1.3. Um, there's more to see about the geometry of this. It's just like touching, scraping the surface, okay? Uh, but can you see how it's like, whoa, it's this whole new world. Complex numbers are the bridge between algebra, this is all algebra stuff, trigonometry is a particular kind of algebra, right? Algebra and geometry, right? Like for, for a very long time, people could not bring these together. Complex numbers just do it effortlessly by their very nature, okay? Um, it's hard to wrap your head around because it's trying to pull together all these strands, yeah? But um, if you take your time through the questions again.